Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to another uh, installment in my in, infrequent or somewhat random series called Unique Games. Uh, and I'm going back to the PlayStation 1 for another unique game that always stood out uh, from so many other games. And this one was actually a particular favorite of not only myself, but my small group of friends when I lived in Montana. We all used to play. Uh, my in particular a friend of mine named Eric used to uh, laugh over the name of this game. He would call it Silverload. Mainly because I think there's a character in this game that says it in that way. But that is the name of this game. Silverload. And this is another one of my PlayStation 1 long box games here. Uh, some of the parts of it are peeling off a little bit, but that's uh, about to be expected. It's an older, older game. There is the manual with an advertisement for Criticom on the inside of it, as well as on the inside here, and there's a game disc complete with a uh, marker. Looks like a P. But uh, anyway, this is, as I said before, a very unique game. It pretty much plays out for the majority of the beginning of the game as a point-and-click style adventure with, I don't know, like dialogue options. Uh, and you can talk to people uh, in this town and along the way to learn things. Uh, but it's like a, a spooky western. I don't know how well some of these pictures are going to come up. But you got this guy right here looking all uh, serious. And then up here in the corner, there's like a scary looking face. Um, and this top picture is in a cemetery with people hanging from the trees. Down below, here's some guy who's looking quite... I don't know how well that's going to come through there, but he's very spooky looking. I don't know. I think he's like the hotel uh, desk clerk. Anyway, uh, it's been ages since I've played this game. Unfortunately, I just don't give my older titles as much time and attention as they should get. But, as I said, for the most part, the game plays out like you saw on the screens. You talk to people, you click things in the environment, and proceed. You'll pick up items that you'll need to get here and there. And then, near the end, for some ungodly reason, it becomes a very cheesy first-person shooter. Think think along the lines of uh, like the very original Area 51 game with like the light gun style game where it's mostly 2D sprite type uh, action. That's what this screenshot right here is. is a sequence that comes up later in the game where you have to shoot a bunch of uh, I don't know like cowboys or whatnot. And uh, that's kind of the, the end sequence of the game, like the boss battle. And I was horrible at it because, for one, uh, this doesn't use a light gun. Now, I just now notice here on the box that it's mouse compatible. And maybe with a mouse, it would work better. But I never had a mouse that I could hook up to the PS1. I'm not even sure if you can hook a regular one up to it or not. But, uh, I don't know, it's it's a very, very fun game. Uh, it's good for a playthrough here and there every once in a while. I'm going to read the back of the box. It says, more money than you'll ever see in a lifetime. That's what they'll give you if you succeed in finding the missing son of two settlers. Of course, this is all easier said than done, considering the circumstances surrounding their request. You'll have to head on out to the town of Silverload, where the world is vampires... Oh, excuse me. Where the word is, vampires and werewolves reside. It's an old town in the west with a sheriff, preacher, and gunfights. Many who have ventured in the silver load have never been seen again, and those that return didn't live long enough to say much about their experience. Silver load. It's a scary town, but the money's good. I don't know. I, I just really uh, get a kick out of this game. The voice acting the mood and the atmosphere to it and I'm not a straight-up Western fan I, I there there are a few Western related things in this world that I like a movie or two that I enjoy um, but for the most part I just don't care for that genre 
until or unless it is spliced in with something different. A scary western, a haunted western, those are good times. Uh, a sci-fi western, hint, hint, towards a TV show that I really love, uh, I like that. That's why I end up liking this, because they added the, the horror aspect to it. And it's just an unusual game. I don't remember how much I paid for this. I think I picked this up two years ago when I had a bunch of tax money and I went a little crazy. And I picked up a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'd say probably 20 or $30, but I could be way off. I know I didn't spend big dollars on it, though. It's harder to find, though. Um, at least when I was searching for it. So anyway, there is another uh, installment in Unique Games. Uh, check it out if you're into something a little unusual. And maybe in the next installment I'll find something that's not from the PS1. Maybe something a little newer. Alright, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.